Okay, you've gotten your soil test back and you're looking at your pH value. And if you need to raise it or lower it, this Debaco University video will help you with that process. All right, let's look at raising and lowering pH values based on your soil test results. Well, first off, you have to know what your plant prefers because there is no ideal pH uh, if across all plants. There is ideal pH for different plants. Some like it very acidic, moderately acidic, slightly acidic, or sometimes even very alkaline. We can see a list here of plant preferred pHs. The optimum pH is based on the plant species you are growing. Most garden plants prefer a soil pH between 6.0 and 6.8, just to give you a general range. This includes cannabis. However, hydroponic growers tend to favor a slightly more acidic end of that range of 5.5 to 6.5. Notable exceptions are acid-loving blueberries, which prefer a pH of around 4.5 to 5.3. Potato varieties uh, without scab resistance are also grown in lower pH. And by lower pH, I mean the 5.2 to 5.4 range, simply put to inhibit the growth of this disease organism. So again, look at the different list here, see what target pH range you will be targeting to match your particular plant. Now also, region can impact pH. Uh, geographic area can also influence native soil pH. Generally, soil pH by region on the east coast here, we're looking at usually the 4.8 to 5.5 range. Midwest, you're talking that six to six and a half, and the southwest around that 7.5 to 8.5. So depending on the region of country that you live in here in the United States, you might be looking at more of uh, looking at raising your pH, or maybe more at lowering your pH there. Now getting your plants to that optimum uh, pH range, how does that kind of play into things here? Well, you will likely need to raise or lower your soil's pH to reach the optimum levels for your plants. And again, we're looking at trying to be as close to that optimum range as possible because you could get into toxic or root damaging conditions uh, or also poor nutrition based on the nutrients not being available to your plants. So if you want to raise the soil pH, well, you're looking at typically adding uh, limestone. So ground limestone is commonly used to help raise uh, soil's pH. Lab, uh, soil testing labs will often offer recommendations that's based on the actual pH, the plants being grown, and the buffering capacity of the soil. So it's good to use their recommendations at least as a good starting point. Typically, the lower the pH and the more clay and organic matter in the soil, the greater amount of limestone is required to raise the soil pH to the target level. That'd be important if you're looking at comparing different fields. They might be at the same pH level, but why does the lab recommend different results for one versus another? It could have to do with the particular uh, content of that soil. Now, when we're making limestone applications, just in general, uh, limestone recommendations by the soil lab are made in tons per acre, or can be pounds uh, per hundred or pounds per thousand square feet. So know the square foot of the area of grow space that you'll be growing in. Limestone needs to react with the soil, so it's highly recommended to be tilled and incorporated into the soil in some way. We don't just want to go through, apply it to the surface, and then walk away. Can you apply it to the surface? That's fine. And then go through making sure you're working it into that soil. If you're not going to incorporate lime, then apply no more than 50 to 75 pounds per thousand square feet, or five to seven and a half pounds per hundred square feet to the soil surface at any one time. Reapply one to six um, month intervals until the total recommendation is administered. And that's again important for that surface application. You don't want to create a solid little uh, layer of that. You want to give it some time to kind of work in hopefully with rain events uh, into that soil profile. Now, when we're looking at our um, limestone options, while it is all limestone, there are actually additional options. The main two being either powdered or pelletized. This will take several months to a year uh, for soil pH to increase. Um, I have moved pH uh, in winter months, uh, so it doesn't necessarily take a full calendar year. However, it is possible to move a full point even over winter months, as I mentioned, if you're using powdered lime as applied and tilled into the soil. Because the pelletized, while it's the same type of lime, uh, that powdered lime can be a little more quicker acting uh, because it's got a greater surface area, so it can come in contact with the soda particles a little quicker, but it is much more difficult to apply. The pelletized lime, the little pellets here, is much easier to apply, but may take longer to adjust the pH. 
Why this be the same if they're both limestone? Well, they're essentially both limestone, but uh, inside a small coating here of the pelletize to make the application easier. As a result, that coating causes a slight delay as the coating dissolves before it can kind of start to adjust the soil pH. So just keep that in mind. Now, the op options within limestone, more than just the type of kind of um, pelletized or powdered, we also have options uh, here of dol dol dolomitic, calcitic, and hydrated. So many of those things, there's just lime, but there's actually three main types. There's dolomitic limestone, which is calcium carbonate plus magnesium carbonate. This is the most commonly found lime, contains elevated levels of magnesium, which can be an added bonus for some growers. Then there's calcitic lime, which is, which is a calcium carbonate. It's often called high cal lime, and it lacks those high levels of magnesium. It's used if magnesium levels are determined to already be at the optimum level. Then there's hydrated lime, which is calcium hydroxide. It's a very quick acting lime. It may change the pH quickly, but keep in mind that while it may do that, it does not have as long residual uh, and change and alteration of the pH as the other lime options mentioned. Also, uh, hydrated lime is a mucous membrane irritant, so be careful if you're applying it. Uh, it can really irritate uh, your nose, your mouth, anywhere, and it's very, especially if it's powdered, just be mindful when you're going through and apply it. And that's why you'll typically see the big label here, warning, keep out of reach of children, and read the label for cautions. Now, in the opposite case of the lime, we're now looking at, we're going to lower the soil's pH. With that, we need a soil acidifier, which is typically sulfur or ferrous sulfate. Uh, these are often recommended to lower pH. Just as we saw with the limestone, these recommendations are usually offered in tons per acre or pounds per hundred or thousand square feet, so it's important to know your growing space. Depending on what the soil is made out of or what the what's, what components are, uh, it may alter the uh, lowering pH, the sulfur recommendations. Both of these compounds, though, do need to react with the soil, just like the lime uh, does, so uh, it's important that you incorporate it into the soil profile. However, if you're not going to be incorporating it, the sulfur uh, should be applied no more than 400 pounds to the acre so this, at the soil surface at any one time uh, to establish plants per year, just to give you an idea. Sulfur in that ferrous sulfate, so keep in mind that elemental sulfur, uh, spring applications and incorporation work best since the acidification process is based on soil biology and not a chemical reaction. Soil temperature should be above 55 degrees Fahrenheit and have good aeration so the bacteria can be active and cause that now reduction in pH. If the soil is anaerobic or waterlogged, the sulfur gets converted into hydrogen sulfide, which actually can damage plants. That's why you want it to be aerated and well drained. Now, ferrous sulfate is more costly to use than sulfur. It's eight times, uh, you need eight times more ferrous sulfate is needed in elemental sulfur. However, it is quicker acting than sulfur. So again, pros and cons, depending on what type of area you might be dealing with. Now you want to avoid aluminum sulfate and sulfuric acid because these seem like they might be good options, but aluminum sulfate can be toxic to certain plants, for example, blueberries, if high rates are applied. Irrigating with dilute sulfuric acid can lower the soil pH, but can damage plants and can corrode metal pipes, fittings, and irrigation systems. So while these sound like they would lower pH, and technically they will, there's some negative side effects that don't allow them to really be made uh, recommended in an agricultural type setting. Lastly, as I mentioned before, you want to follow the lab recommendations. It's based on the lab that you select. They're going to take the pH, they're going to take your soil type, they're going to take buffering capacities, and they're going to go through and kind of utilize all those factors to give you a good recommendation. If you don't necessarily 100% agree with that recommendation, you might want to favor maybe on the slightly lower side, or really use their recommendation as a good starting point, and then see how your soil reacts over time, and base your repeated applications um, on that. So hopefully this was helpful in allowing you to understand if you want to raise or lower your soil pH.